Welcome to the monthly meeting of LAFCO, March 20, 2024. Madam Clerk, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Present. Commissioner Clark? Present. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner Gonzalez? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Peters, alternate for Scrivener? Here. Commissioner Saragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Peters, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Everybody, please stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to the item number three. Video conference emergency request if necessary. <coughs> Madam Clerk, is any commissioner attending by a video conference? No. If, moving on to item number four. Approval of the minutes for February 21st, 2024. Is there any public comment? Seeing none. Is there any commissioner comments or questions? Seeing none. May I have a motion? Motion to approve Fowler. Second, Peters. Okay, motion by Fowler, second by uh, Commissioner Peters. May I, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desired to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over the commission, on which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making presentation. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody for public comment? No. Okay. Closing public comment. Uh, moving to item number six, determination proceeding. A, 1823 North of the River Sanitary District Number 1. Uh, let me read. A proposed annexation of at approximately 40.99 acres consisting of three parcels of both developed and unapproved un, uh, land into the North of the River Sanitary District and the detachment from CSA 71 from the affected areas. Parcel A, 34.22 acres located south of Hageman Road and east of North Road. Parcel B, 2.14 acres located north of Norris Road and west of Coffee Road. Parcel C, 4.63 acres located north of Petro Road and west of North Chester Avenue Extension. The annexation is for the purpose of providing sewer uh, service at a date in the future, I mean, at a date in the future, in the future yet to be determined. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested waiver of notice, hearing and protest hearing pursuant to government code 56663 resolution. Uh, Mr. Knox, your report, please. We need to shorten that. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, no two annexations are exactly alike, but this is about as generic as an annexation go. We have property owners who would like sewer service. In, the case, in this case, we have three parcels to bring into the North River Sanitary District. The proposed annexation overlaps with CSA 71, which will need to be detached as it provides a similar service. Other overlapping agencies that do not provide the same service have been notified and, and have not provided any comments. We do have information from elections on voters, assessor on landowners, and then surveyor has signed off on the maps and legal descriptions. The CEO, CEO's office has provided a tax letter, letter for which we will uh, there will not be a tax sharing as the district is fee-based. This uh, annexation is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans, or specific plans. There's no ag land conversion. It's consistent with commission policies and conforms with assessor's parcels. We have an indemnification agreement from the applicant, and there's, um, there is an adequate water supply. CEQA is, is handled by a notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. 
The applicant has requested waiver of notice, hearing, and protest hearing pursuant to government code 56663. It is recommended that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and accept conditions recommended by the executive officer and approve annexation number 1823, North River Sanitary District number 114, and detach from CSA 71, and that's det detachment V. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, do we have any uh, public comment regarding this? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions regarding the item? I have Chair. one question. Uh, Ms. Fowler? Um, CSA 71 isn't currently able to provide sewer. They, they provide um, sewer planning, but not actually sewer. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Peters? Thank you, I just wanted to clarify on parcel A, is that east of North Road, is that correct, or is that supposed to be Nord Road? Nord, Nord Road. Okay, so I just would, uh, whatever we make a motion, just reflect that change is Nord instead of North Road. Okay. On the agenda. Do we have any other commissioner comments or questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve with the amended um, eliminating North and uh, actually having the North Chester Avenue extension? Is that correct? Yeah, motion uh, to approve as stated. Peter. Oh, correct. Second motion, Zaragoza. Motion by Commissioner Peters, second by Commissioner Zaragoza. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Uh, yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to number seven, notice of public hearings, the preliminary, preliminary 2024 annual budget. Consideration of the 24-25 proposed preliminary budget. The budget for Kern LAFCO is determined by the commission and funded by the county of Kern. The incorporated cities in Kern County and the independent special districts that Kern LAFCO is designated as the principal county, which each category agency paying a third of the budget per government, co government code section 56381, subsection B1A. The, a proposed budget is required to be, uh, be adopted prior to the final budget being considered per governor, government code section 56381, subsection A. Mr. Knox? Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's start with where revenues come from. We will then move to where expenses go and then transition to our reserves, which hopefully stay where they are. Re uh, revenues come from two sources, fees and the yearly assessment. LAPCO fees are purposely less than actual cost. The issue with fees is that there are, is such a wide range of proceedings and fees collected in a fiscal year, it would be difficult to budget without having a very large reserve. With this in mind, fees are kept low and the difference is made up with the yearly assessment. And the assessment is paid by a third by the county, cities, and special districts. Uh, the revenues are pretty simple. Expenses are a little more challenging. Over two thirds of our costs are associated with employees. Let's start with those costs first. Salaries are within the typical 4% range for salary increases that we've seen over the last several years. Unfunded liabilities went up drastically. This is due to the two-year delay in the actuarials. That means we are dealing with 2021 CalPERS investment financials from right, before, right in the middle of the pandemic. Despite the commission's efforts to pay down more of an unfunded liability by using a portion of the carryover at the end of the year, this is a pretty big one-year hit. If there is a good news to be had, it's that we already know that 2022 and 2023 there was a nice bounce back in the market, which should be reflected in future reductions in the next couple of years. State retirement uh, is 20% more than last year, and much the same story. CalPERS wants, to, wants more to backfill their shortfall from 2021. Employee group insurance will remain the same. This item is the health reimbursement account with employees. Uh, a full amount is rarely used, but we have to account for all the potential use within a single budget year. On the services and supply side of the budget, there's a 20% increase in general liability insurance. 
At this point in the meeting, I would like to take a moment to tell you a little bit about life insurance. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, Ned Ryerson is smiling, if you know that reference. <laughs> um, Groundhog Day, yes, Groundhog Day. Uh, the commission currently provides $50,000 in life insurance to the full-time staff and $100,000 in life insurance to the executive officer, which was the maximum that SDR may, our insurance provider, would write for a policy. Recently, SDR may up the amounts with a maximum of $200,000. The current policy costs the commission about $1,200 per year. If the amounts were increased, um, to $200,000 and $100,000, you'd go from uh, uh, $1,200 per year to $2,400 per year. Uh, there's a couple options for the commission could pursue. One is to increase the coverage from $100,000 to $200,000 for me and, and $100,000 for staff. Uh, second, increase the coverage and pay a portion of the increase and in staff paying a portion. Three, increase the coverage and allow the staff to pay for extra uh, extra coverage at a payroll, or, or four, make no change at all. Under memberships, um, we pay for our CSDA and Kern County Special District Association. I continue to not recommend rejoining CalAFCO. Uh, they have done nothing to resolve their issues identified uh, when we left. <laughs> Office expenses are reduced. Uh, finally, something going down as we have no uh, regularly scheduled replacement of equipment or upgrades needed at this time. Rents and, rents and leases takes a large jump. This is a separate agenda item, but let me speak about this now and hopefully shorten my comments when we get to the new lease agreement later in the agenda. <coughs> Our lease on 5300 Linux is up in June. We have traditionally had five-year leases and propose to do the same now. Since the last lease was signed, the building was sold, and substantial improvements have been made to the building complex. After some negotiation, the, ac the actual monthly lease is not substantially different. We'll be paying the same rate, $1.70 per square foot, as we currently are paying in 23 and 24. In each of the next four years, there'll be a 3% increase. The difference comes in the reassessment of the square footage of the suite. The new owners decided to re, re calculate that and it's gone up using a standardized um, method of, of counting square feet. In addition, several months ago we received a bill for a common area maintenance. Um, basically, for, we are now being charged for taking care of the common areas. Uh, we got a bill originally for the 21-22 year a couple of months ago, so here we are, 24, and they're get, they're sending they're sending us bills from three years, three and four years ago, uh, and then we recently received a, a bill for 2023. In reviewing the la in the, agreement, the lease agreement, the owner has the ability to charge these expenses, but it's not we have not seen them for several years, and I didn't budget for these going these amounts. After having complained, the ownership has decided to include a monthly CAM payment of approximately $400 per month on our invoice with a possible equalization payment at the end of the year. In research of the current local market for office space, we are at the low end of similar spaces, even with the increase. That brings us to professional and specialized services. I'm not asking for additional funds in this category has historically been budgeted at significantly higher than actual cost to account for any unforeseen legal issues and to pay for studies and reports. Uh, special department expense, this one always tricks me a little bit. I believe this covers the cost of the assessor, surveyor, auditor, and board of equalization when LAFCO is lead agency. These costs are paid by LAFCO and then are passed along to the applicant for reimbursement and the reimbursement shows up in, in fees, not back into the special department expense. Transportation and tra travel, I raise a little bit to reflect the current cost of travel and potential for com commissioners and staff to attend more conferences. Uh, the reserve is set by the commission at 10% of the budget plus any unaccrued sick and vacation time. You'll see that at the very bottom of your budget sheet. Uh, overall, it turns out to be a 7% increase in the budget. To close, there are three areas where I could use some direction. 
One is the life insurance increases. Uh, two, payment of unfunded liability, and three, overall budget. With that, uh, the recommendation is to accept the preliminary 24-25 budget with input from final budget to be brought back to the uh, next commission meeting. Direct staff as to the commission's choice of life insurance, paying down unfunded, li uh, unfunded liability. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding this item? Seeing none. Do we have any commissioner questions or comments regarding the preliminary budget? Go ahead, Ms. Commissioner Fowler. Um, Mr. Knox, I'm interested in this um, 393 buck monthly cost for the common area upkeep. They have uh, plantings that don't require upkeep. They have allium. I forget what the other couple plants are. They do have some annuals up front, but our previous lease indicated they could charge, but they never charged. Correct. There was never a stated amount, and then suddenly, retroactively, they're charging. I'm puzzled by that. So, so have I been, uh, but in reviewing it, there's not really a way around it. Um, there is a gardener that comes once a week. There is nightly security that comes around. Um, and checks checks the buildings uh, for their late. They come and check and see if our doors locked and, and all that. Uh, so there are d additional expenses. Um, Patty, do we have a breakdown of what those expenses are that we could give to the commissioner commission next meeting? Okay. With I think that would be helpful for everyone if they saw what the, exactly those expenses were. Yeah. Any other questions or concerns? Commissioner Saragosa. <laughs> I'm at the very end. You can barely see me. Um, on the, uh, on the, uh, I think it's, I think it was the first item that you had mentioned for uh, commissioner direction on the life insurance. Yes. And you mentioned is it three options or four options. I lost count after three. <laughs> well, the four, fourth option is do nothing. <laughs> I was thinking. Um, kind of interesting and I'm not prepared to really respond to that other than the fact that maybe it could be referred to the uh, budget committee and they could meet and maybe kind of drill down further uh, with staff assistance and maybe come up with a recommendation at our next meeting. That's my recommendation on this issue. Makes sense. Uh, do we have any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, uh, can I have a motion? I'll move the adoption of the preliminary, you want adoption of the preliminary budget, that's your request, right? That's, that's one of them. I need some direction on the, on the other two items. On the unfunded liability, whether we want to take, um, let me stop for a second. Uh, for several years, we took 25% of, of what we had left over at the end of the year and put that towards the unfunded liability. Last year, we upped that to 50%, uh, and that's worked out generally pretty well until we got, you know, the 2021 actuarial. Uh, so if that's what the commission would like to do again, that's what I will put in the budget going forward. Uh, and then we have the recommendation on, on um, going to the budget committee on the life insurance. So I, I would recommend that, the 50% uh, going to the unfunded liability. And when is our lease up? June. <clears throat> Can the Finance Committee take a look at our options with regard to, I know that's getting, that's pretty quick. Well, the lease is actually up, uh, is on the agenda in a separate item uh, that we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay. Maybe we can, well, go ahead. Okay. I, I, I made a motion to adopt your preliminary budget and uh, use 50% of the uh, carry over towards the unfunded liability and include the referral to the budget committee the budget committee on the life insurance okay second fowler i have a motion by commissioner couch second by commissioner fowler i have a vote please commissioner ayon aye commissioner clark yes commissioner couch yes commissioner crump yes commissioner fowler yes commissioner gonzalez aye 
Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item number eight, commission, commission items, executive officer contract agreement. Mr. Knox? In your packet is a copy of my revised contract uh, that the HR firm that you approved last month uh, rewrote, and I'm turning this over to Mr. Schroeder. Uh, there was a memo in your packet uh, outlining what the, the contract says. Um, the, uh, your ter the terms that you wanted to put in uh, a couple of meetings ago when Blair went through uh, his general nature of what the contract was have been included. Um, I can go through the memo if you want me to. Uh, or if you have specific questions that occurred to you when you went through the memo, I can answer those. Okay, thank you. We'll open it to public comment. I don't see no public comment. Commissioner, uh, comments or questions? Uh, Commissioner Saragosa, go ahead. Sure. Um, I think this is an excellent two-page memo. Counselor, it uh, summarizes everything pretty precisely. I have a rookie question. It's the uh, third paragraph has to do with the extension. The third paragraph? Right. Um, the at will? The at will. Okay. Yeah. There's no subtitles or subparagraph. No, no. I have to kind of see number yeah. one, number two, number three, number three paragraph. It says here, um, um, well, the second sentence is very clear. You know, at the end of each term, the term is extended automatically for another year and it's always in a five-year term. And then the statement says next, the extension can be terminated at any time by either party so that thereafter the contract ends with a five-year term expires. The question I had on that last statement was, if the extension was to be terminated, if, you want. if the extension was to be terminated, would there be a required 90 days written notice? That's the question. Oh, you don't need okay. Just think about that in there. I know. Yeah. I just wanted to verify that because I think one, two, three, four. On the fifth paragraph, there's reference to a ninety days written notice. Yeah. 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 So I appreciate that's pretty much you answered my question. If if you could, staff, reflect the question that I had and the answer from the attorney in the minutes so that it's sure. clear because I couldn't tell from that, but okay. It's clear now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other commissioner questions or concerns? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion of Crump. Second, Peters. I have a motion by Commissioner Crump, second by Commissioner Peters. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to still remain on item eight, I mean, number eight. Uh, resolution vacate 1777 and 1778 Buena Vista Water Storage District Annexation. Number one, Spear of Influence Amendment. In accordance with the appellant court ruling on Kern Water Bank Authority versus Kern LAFCO, the commission has determined that continuing the appeal, the lawsuit is not in the commission's, commission's best interest and will therefore be required to vacate Annexation 1777 and Spear of Influence of 1778. Mr. Knox. I will make this short, and if Mr. Schroeder wants to add anything, I'm sure he'll jump in. At the last commission meeting, uh, there was a vote to not continue pursuing the lawsuit, Kern Water Bank Authority versus Kern LAFCO, over the Buena Vista Water Storage District Annexation and Spear of Influence. Including your pack as a res resolution vacating Buena Vista's annexation, and sphere of influence in accordance with the appellate court ruling. My recommendation to vacate 1777 and 1778 when it was to water district annexation and sphere of influence amendment. Okay, do we have any public comment regarding this item? Seeing none. Any commissioner questions or concerns? Seeing none, do I have a nope. one down here? Oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah, Cook, Commissioner. I Cook. wanted to verify the numbers because you've got on the top 1777 and 78, and in the bottom you've got 78 and 79. Correct, it's 77 and 78. Okay. And we should re we should reflect that in the minutes as well. 
Motion to approve Fowler. Second, Peters. A motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Peters. Can I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion pass. Thank you. Moving on to number nine, general business, approval of monthly expense list number 2402. Any co commission questions or comments regarding the the monthly uh, monthly expenses or approval? No, sir. I do have a comment, though, uh, Commissioner Go Clark. Uh, it might be for legal. Uh, at the beginning, I approved minutes. I do want to reflect that I was not here, so it might be appropriate to abstain on those particular minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. I just wanted to clarify that. Thanks for allowing me to go back. No problem. Thank you. Do uh, I don't see any questions, concerns regarding nine A. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion, Crump. Second, Peters. I have a motion by Commissioner Crump. Second by Commissioner Peters. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon. Aye. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Couch. Yes. Commissioner Crump. Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to the to the office lease renewal, Mr. Knox. Yeah, I covered this in detail in the budget. Um, it sounds like we're going back to committee and bringing this back next month. Is that correct? That's what I was going to ask if you could do. Yes. Thank you. I do have a question. Last year we had talked about possibly when this, when the lease came up about sharing office space with uh, Kern Cog. That wasn't mentioned, so is there a reason it wasn't mentioned? I really wasn't in favor of it. Um, they wanted to put us in the back back here without any windows or and really much security for our files and things like that. So I just didn't feel like it was an appropriate place to. Well, that's okay. I mean, I was just asking because it was brought up and it wasn't yes. this time. Um, I don't like the parking down here. Um, there, there's a number of reasons that's. Well, I was this, told we could lock you up over there, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> So the recommendation, I guess, is to take this committee to committee. That's, yes. Do you need a motion for that? Yes. I'll move that. Thank you. Second. We have a second. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner. God, I'm losing my mind. Couch and Commissioner. Second by Commissioner Crump to to move this to the. What was the, what, what was the committee? It's a Couch Crump motion. <laughs> <laughs> the Caesar got me, but. May I have a vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Krupp? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion pass. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to report 2024 2025 state legislation. Uh, Mr. Knox. I put this report in the agenda packet at key times during the legislative process to remind the commission about the largest threat to the operations and viability of LAFCO, the state legislature. But I rarely bring an item to the commission for a position. It does happen, and I keep on top of key bills in Sacramento that could substantially alter this commission for good, most likely, un unlikely, and bad throughout uh, my work on this ESDA legislative committee. This is an informational item and does not require a vote. Okay, perfect. Uh, do we have any public comment? Seeing none, uh, commissioner questions or concerns? Okay, we don't require a vote. Moving on to the executive officer miscellaneous items, Mr. Knox. Uh, for those of you who have not turned in your Form 700, the uh, deadline is April 1st, uh, so don't be fooled. It's April 1st. Uh, 
last meeting, we promised that the request for a proposal for the website would be sent out. That has now been done. Uh, there are several steps in the process, and we hope to have bids back to the commission with a recommendation for approval at the May meeting. We are starting to see a large number of projects that should be heading our way in the next 12 months. We have requests for two formations, at least a dozen City of Bakersfield annexations that are being held up until the state approves the county's arena numbers, several other annexations from other cities and a transportation agency in Metro Bakersfield that hasn't changed its boundaries in 40 years. The five years SOI reviews are not com complete quite yet. We have a few left. Uh, there's still a few districts that have not completed their paperwork or have outstanding issues that need to be addressed. I will bring back the MSR policy uh, for the commission to consider that went through the policy committee several months ago. Uh, and both Bud and I have been working on several with several agencies that have are having financial difficulty, infrastructure hurdles, leadership problems, and often a combination of all three. There continues to be discussion around water concerns in Eastern Kern that could require a change in the structure of how services are provided in the Ridgecrest area. Conditions of mutual water, consolidations of mutual water companies into, to, into water districts in Southeast Bakersfield and Lamont is moving slowly as the applicants are waiting on the state water board to finish their work and provide funding for annexations before this can move forward. Staff is also working with self enterprises in their attempt to help to get the Weldon water district up and running and Ridgecrest regional hospital needs financial help that might be provided by the development of a relationship with a healthcare district that will require a rather large annexation and SOI amendment. Our next meeting, even though we have a lot of work ahead of us, except for the final budget, there will not be any proceedings ready to be heard in, in, at the April meeting. If the commission has any thought of wanting to make changes uh, when we present the final budget, then we should meet in April. If not, we can cancel the meeting and come back in May. Beware, this, uh, if the budget does not pass in May, there will need to be a special meeting before June 15th to make, meet the state deadline. We did this last year and it turned out to be fine. Also be aware that the Lost Hills CSD formation will likely be coming back in May, so that will be a, a pretty long meeting. So much so that we might need to push the LAFCO 101 back to June, which I promised you um, earlier. So I'm trying to manage time here. Uh, also, um, also keep in mind if we skip April, tonight would be Commissioner Crump's and uh, alternate Albright's last meeting. Um, so if we decide to do that, thank you for your service on, on the commission. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here and um, the yeah, work we've lot. done. We know you want me on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that brings up another interesting thing, which is um, as Commissioner Crump and Albright exit, the process to replace them has run into a hiccup. McFarland will name an alternate, which isn't a problem, which would uh, replace um, alternate Albright. Um, but if the city selection committee stays with a normal al alphabetical rotation, that the next step for the regular seat would be Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest has nominated their mayor to the um, city select committee. The problem is that their meetings are on the th fourth, third Wednesday of the month, the same time as ours. Uh, it's in direct conflict with our schedule. Uh, since we moved our meetings from the fourth Wednesday uh, to the third at the request of the city of Bakersfield. And Gary's not here to give him trouble about that. Uh, <laughs> I've had a conversation with Kathy Kraus, who acts as a staff for the city select committee and the city Reg Regcrest with no conclusion. Um, Tomorrow night is actually the city select committee. They'll actually be meeting here, so I'm gonna be at the meeting tomorrow. Um, I guess my question is, uh, would the commission be interested in changing our times of our and dates of our meeting again? Or are we looking at um, possibly a different city stepping in, short, in, in the short term? Recommending that, there's, this is not an easy, there's no real easy, easy answer to how we address this. Ridgecrest definitely does want to be on. Uh, there's a number of issues going on in the high desert that are going to come our way in the next couple of years. Go ahead, Commissioner Fowler. 
Does Ridgecrest not have a vice mayor? I'm sure they do. I, yeah. But to miss, but, miss right. every, uh, at least one meeting a month. Yeah, and I think the council selected the mayor to uh, represent. Right. So. I've, I've had a brief conversation with him. He says, well, let's try to figure it out. And so we'll p have part of that conversation tomorrow. But I just wanted to get some feedback from you uh, before I have that conversation. Um, this is Commissioner Zaragoza. I'm actually very sympathetic to Ridgecrest, but <laughs> the last time we moved, it was difficult for me. I mm -hmm. almost had to drop out. So another move might be challenging and then you have to affect nine commissioners on the move right i'm afraid for me it would be out of the question unless it was really a good time and in, in, in day but once again i'm sympathetic to the problem that rich Crest has concerning that meeting day but it is difficult every time you make a move because i rescheduled all my commitments for the year so i could be here on wednesday no i have a question as far as would they be traveling or would it be tele the way that the law now uh, works is you can you can attend by video conference if you are uh, away on business or if you're sick, and this commission would have to make a, a would vote on whether you're sick enough or on or on working uh, on behalf of your your agency. To no. allow them to do that, and I think there's a maximum number of months you can do that, two or three, within no. a calendar year. Is there any way that they could start their meeting later? They start their meeting at six, so that would give them 45 minutes. But if they're could, driving, they could, there's they no could way. start at 6:30, or I don't know. That's the recommendation. So we're not changing the date. It's still not time for them to drive drive back. How about flying? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, uh, Commissioner Peters. Um, um, next. <laughs> My question is, though, is like with Bakersfield, they meet two nights a month. I'm sure Ridgecrest does. So you're, if you did change it, you'd be looking at even uh, going to a completely different night, wouldn't you? Most likely, yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Peters. Thank you. Uh, f a few things. Number one. It's my understanding in, in talking with some of our council that the law was changed again with AB 361, where if you have a quorum that's meeting in person, you can still have less than a quorum teleconferencing, that it's not uh, dependent on being sick anymore. Could we clarify that? <laughs> no, I don't believe so. Yeah, we, we go by AB 2449, which uh, uh, transitioned from the COVID uh, virtual meetings uh, but you, you could still have a virtual meeting, but mm -hmm. you got to have a quorum of a per, a personal quorum. Right. And and as the executive officer mentioned, you have to have a, a legitimate reason, and legitimate is it has to be a, an emergency, generally a medical emergency, or a, 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 that was called for cause. And there are several items that are for cause, but they're very specific. Okay. Could, could we? Just confirm that. I, I'm not questioning that, but I've been told specifically by our other council for a couple other meetings that that's no longer the case. What what uh, bill was she talking about? I believe it's AB 361, but I'll have to double check that. Well, I can certainly look at that. Yeah, I appreciate it. And then uh, secondly, again, I'm just the alternate uh, here for uh, Supervisor Scribner and... Uh, you're, you're serving as a regular it, right, but, at this uh, point. but as far as setting this, the schedule, if you know this is important to Ridgecrest, I'd like to help in however I can in uh, that conversation with Ridgecrest as far as scheduling or working out some, some alternatives so they can still participate and uh, happy to be involved uh, however would be helpful. Let me just say this. Uh, AB 361 sunsetted January 1. <clears throat> Okay, it, it may be a different uh, bill that I'm thinking of, but but I'll take I'll, another I'll look. Get that it might have been extended. Yeah, I'll yeah. take a look. Sure. Thanks. Chairman, sure. uh, Commissioner Couch, can I ask a question? Um, our options are: we can change our night, time. We could change our time, or we can. I don't know if the city of Bakersfield still needs to have it on this night or not. So I was going to ask Andre if you have any sense of that 
uh, the city of Bakersfield meets um, twice a month, uh, every other Wednesday, and so it wouldn't be a problem if we moved it to another night, another day of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be. I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't be another Wednesday. You just need to avoid probably the third Thursday, which is the current cog meeting, and I know. I typically don't like Tuesdays because you and supervisors spend ridiculous amount of time. Tuesdays as well, yes. <laughs> but avoid I mean, Thursdays. There's only one Thursday a month right. I think you need to avoid, and that's the third one of the month. Right. Okay. Yeah, we would have to look at all of your schedules. Several of you are on other are on other committees as well to make sure that there isn't a, a conflict. I wanted to chime in before it gets too late. I'm open to can I speak? Yes, yeah. go ahead, Commissioner. I, I'm open to, to, to being adaptable. You know, if it's a particular Thursday that is available to all. But what happens if it happens again with another city? There's a conflict. Are we going to then go around the table and see if we can change our schedules again? At some point, I'm just wondering what is our position on this, and I'm just trying to be flexible, but thinking of the future. That's all. Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer of what's <clears throat> appropriate here. I mean, if 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 we keep the same day, if we could change the time to an earlier, if we meet at five fifteen, we could. I don't know what the the commissioners would think. You know, to basically help out Ridgecrest. I don't know what the, what the drive. I don't know if that would even be consistent of them driving over here meeting at three then driving back to their meeting so therefore it doesn't affect the days of other individuals because some of us serve you know for the council or other boards but so we don't change the date we just change the time anyone i was just informed by the kgov guys that they do the county planning commission at least one thursday a month so we'd have to check on that schedule as well if we moved it to Thursdays but by the way does uh, uh, Mr. Rice you want to address this sure. okay uh, just got a message uh, from Eric Bruin of Ridge City of Ridgecrest City Council and he said they can accommodate the meeting schedule as it is as set okay. well there you go we've solved the problem <laughs> There we go. <laughs> I guess that worked out. <laughs> Let me get my glasses back because I'm losing my sight. All, All right. right. And, so, and that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, we will come back. Uh, well, we haven't decided yet. Uh, are we coming back in April oh. to hear the hear the budget, or do we want to wait till May? <clears throat> Can I ask a question about go ahead, Mr. Yes. Couch. Uh, LAFCO 101? Do we get um, continuing ed credit for that? No. We do not. <laughs> no. Why not? Why is that so funny? Uh, <laughs> we have to do a lot of continuing education. Right. And I've been told that almost any kind of continuing ed that we do can count for even Kaysera or multiple other requirements. Why would we not get it for that? I don't know how it works. Um, okay. Do is there someone we are supposed to register with, so that ours our me our. Why don't I put you in touch with somebody either at Kaysera or the county that's continually scheduling continuing education for us. Okay. And they're keeping track of it, so I'll put you in touch with them. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Couch. Uh, Commissioner Fowler, you have a question. Different subject. Uh, would you mind telling us who's on the budget committee and we need to arrange to meet before either our April meeting or the following one? Do you recall offhand? I think I'm one, but who is our leader on that one? It's in the minutes. Mm-hmm. Budget committee is Scribner, Crump, Ione, and Fowler. But no Crump, then. Or we'll still have Commissioner Crump. Um, 
If yes, if it's before the first Tuesday in May, he's still on the commission. Uh, at the chair's um, discretion, he could also name uh, Commissioner Clark to the budget committee. I think you said Commissioner Gonzalez. Did I hear? Uh, Commissioner Gonzalez is up. <laughs> Commissioner, com Commissioner. Co <laughs> Don't give me those money. <laughs> so, so C Commissioner Gonzalez is on the policy committee. Uh, a lot Good of our try, policy, <laughs> a lot of our policy committee I issues uh, stem from the city of Bakersfield. So it's. A, it's He's already causing trouble. This <laughs> yes. Oh, I've, I've been trying to be nice. <laughs> Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll, we'll uh, select the Commissioner Clark. Okay. Okay. And do we want to come back in April or, or meet in May? Since you're taking for Scribner, I mean, you're going to be for Scribner, so do we want to, anybody suggest or recommend May? Well, let's go back to my, to your initial uh, concern was making either the May or June meeting extra long because you were going to do the LAPCO 101 where you were going to push that off? Well, and we, we will likely have Lost Hills uh, CSD well. formation. So you got those two things. Which, that, could the take, budget and, which could take a couple hours. So why don't we dedicate April to the 101? Okay. We can do that. You, you, we you, can have, do, a, we can, you have a light April? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, except we won't have a new a new um, city on at that time. That's why the, I was I was waiting for Ridgecrest to come on. Well, perhaps they. I, I don't want to butt in, but I think I think David Couch's uh, Commissioner Couch's idea is pretty good because you can actually get that done, and then they can also view online. Yeah, we, we'll record it so yeah, that they'll they'll see it, and then getting back to your question, David, uh, when I attend some of the. Um, LAFCO presentations, I get credit yeah. through the um, American Institute of Certified Planners. So there's always a way, depending who your accrediting agency is, to get the credits. It's just a matter of looking into it and getting that approved. Because I agree, you need to get your credits up to speed like everybody else. So there's probably a way. It makes no sense to me that KSERA would use LAFCO 101 hours for credit at Kaysera, but I think they would. Okay. So. I'll, I'll look into how that works. Well, we are having a meeting in April. Then. We are. Okay. Any more questions, concerns from the commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Uh, moving on to closed session, we have none. Our next, uh, no more items to discuss. Our next scheduled meeting is April 17, 2024. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion by Crump and Couch. <laughs> Do I have a vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes, I, I did want to point out that, uh, do I get a rebuff his comments about the Tiger Bar? I just... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Peters? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes. Motion passed. Thank you. That ends our meeting at 6.06.